So I've got a screen here with a few components and each one is using custom files in a different way. And I'm going to walk you through real quick how those things are happening. So first thing I've, I'm using a custom code component, which uh, you might be familiar with. If you've used custom code in the past, we use that to render custom JSX on your screen. Here I'm using it to render a Squircle with a cute little icon inside. Um, so this, some of this might be familiar to you, including uh, mainly this section right here, but we've included a section above that now where you can import your custom files. So you can see here, I have a list of a few files and uh, for this one, I'm importing Squircle so that I can use my Squircle component and I'm passing my children into Squircle, the children being uh, my icon here. Okay, so let's take a look at what that Squircle file looks like. If we open up our custom code modal, uh, you'll see now there is a files option on the left, so I'm gonna click that. And here's a list of my files. I'm gonna select Squircle and give you a rundown here. You can give it a name, a optional description. You can set a file type. Currently, there's five different file types you can choose from. JavaScript, JSON, TypeScript, plain text, and Markdown. Here I'm using JavaScript. And there's two different locations in which you can put your custom file. Top level, that'll be uh, at the very top root uh, of your directory for your package. And there's a subdirectory named custom-files, which you can also choose. So that's where my custom component is living right now. I am importing React and I have added React Native Figma Squircle as a package for my project. I'm importing Squircle View and I've just got a simple render function here which is returning that Squircle View with some uh, default styling and uh, passing in those children. So again, very similar to how you would use custom uh, component file in the past. However, now you're gonna need to tell it which file do you want to import so that you can use it uh, in your JSX here. Okay, moving on, I've got another one here, custom text. That's gonna be this guy right here. And you can see, again, I have imported files, but this time I've got two different ones that I'm using. Custom text uh, is my render function for my component, and language uh, is what I'm using to translate uh, so I've got a couple translations uh, with a uh, welcome key um, in Japanese and English. And then, so I'm basically passing it. I've got a string prop on my custom uh, text component, and I'm passing in a translation for that welcome, which uh, since we're set to English, in this case is hello. So let's take a look. Custom text JS. Again, custom code modal. Go to my files, custom text, and you can see here, JavaScript file in custom files directory. I'm importing React. I'm importing the regular React Native text component, passing in the string, and rendering the string inside the component with a, a fixed font size value. Pretty cut and dry. Um, and then, oh, let me show you the language file. So I've got my language file here. Again, I have uh, added these two packages to my project. So I'm importing localization and I18N, internationalization, um, giving it a quick translations config, uh, English, Japanese with a welcome key. We're uh, initializing the package, setting the locale from the device, and then exporting that as a translate function um, to our code, which I've been using right here directly in our JSX. Okay, next one up, we've got, this is just a default text component uh, built in, that's this little guy down here. And uh, it's also returning a translation of welcome, but I'm doing it in a slightly different way here. I am using, like, like I said, the uh, just a built in text and I'm passing our welcome key to a transform with function. So I have a function named translate string and we can take a look at what that looks like. So I'll go to my screen functions, translate screen. Um, this is a, like a normal screen function, but now you have the addition of being able to import your custom files. So I have imported my custom uh, language file and that gets imported up here at the top by default. 
and I've got my string parameter that I'm passing in. And then again, I'm using that language translate T method passing in the string. So exactly like we were doing with the JSX, but here in this case, I'm just passing the string into a function, returning the, the translation. Uh, and at the end of the video, I'll show you uh, how that translates um, to Japanese if we change the device uh, language okay so next up is going to be the push me and i'll just show you real quick what happens when i push me uh, we get an alert admin role with unrestricted access okay cool um so let's see what that's doing uh i've got an on press trigger running a custom function that function is show role and i'm passing in the admin key so let's take a look at my show role screen function you can see here I'm uh, accepting a role parameter and then I have imported my enums file and my show.js file. So the show.js file is basically just uh, alerting whatever value you, you pass to it. It's got a role method and then our enums, uh, I've got a role that I'm exporting a constant basically um, that we're passing the role into. So let's take a look at our enums and show.js real quick. So I've got my enums here, exporting role. Then I've got my keys basically um, talking about each role. And then my show is literally just taking whatever value I'm passing to it and alerting that. So in our case, it's the, uh, it's the translation. It's whatever is passed in from this. So it'd be admin role with unrestricted access. So, okay, that covers um, the bulk of it. Uh, if you have any questions, obviously let us know. Hit up the documentation for a little bit more in-depth uh, look at what all you can do and how things can be configured. Um, but this gives you a pretty good overall idea of the different ways that you can now use custom files uh, in your custom functions and in your custom code, your JSX. And I'll show you uh, here now we're at the end I can switch over, uh, I'm going to change the language of this device. If you did not know, when you run an iOS preview or an Android preview in DraftBit, uh, you are actually running the app inside of a device, a native device. So you're getting an actual preview of what that looks like, what your app looks like. Oop. All right, language and region. I'm going to change our language on this device to Japanese. All right. Let's change that. Let it refresh. You can see here, we've already got, it's telling us it's setting that up. All right, now we can switch back to Expo Go. And pick our project. And there we go. We've got, it's now giving us our Japanese translation for each of these components here that we're using, where we're using the language translate. Again, I'll show you, I've got my language file here and uh, it's because we've changed the language of the device to Japanese, it's now returning the Japanese translation for our welcome key. All right, cool. Um, all right. Hope that was helpful. Hope you guys enjoy it. Let us know what you think and we'll talk to you later.